God to be blessing a woman of God. And certainly we have enjoyed the journey. And thank God for our apostles, our pastors who have taken the leadership. So God bless you. Thank God for this opportunity. Hear ye, Overseer Jacqueline McEwen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I first want to thank God for all that he is yet doing. And I thank God for every step that I'm taking. Hallelujah. Those of you who have seen me, in fact, the last few months, it was from a walker to a cane. But God. Hallelujah. And I can shout right there. <laughs> Amen. But I'm going to do what I've been asked to do. First, I commend Apostles Paul and Freddie Cleveland for their excellence in ministry. Hallelujah. They not only nurture the members of Cornelia, but they nurture a lot of pastors in this area. And we praise God for that. And we just congratulate you, pastors, apostles, for your 12th year of pastoring. And may God continue to bless you and give you all that you desire and those needs that he will supply. He's certain to supply. I'm uh, here to introduce uh, Bishop Ralph L. Dennis. But I'm going to, this introduction is going to be quite different because of the relationship over many years. So I'm not going to talk about, you know, how many uh, degrees he has and uh, how many books he's written and all of that and where he's been and, and where he's on his way to. I'm not going to talk about that today. So just bear with me because Bishop Dennis is so deeply woven into the fabric of not only the history of the church, but almost every major transition that I have made. So I want you to listen to what I have to say. <laughs> when we both were members of the United Holy Church of America, I remember sitting under his powerful preaching and listening intently, especially when he would teach on the fivefold anointing or the fivefold ministry. Hallelujah. His profound teaching on this subject have revitalized many ministries, causing them to function more efficient, efficiently. In fact, I still have some of his shared material that he presented while we were a part of the United Holy Church. I still have it, and I'm still using it. Cornelia knows that. So I began attending what was called, not a retreat, but the advance, or eventually leadership advance. This is where I witnessed Bishop Dennis, as well as others, so open to God's presence. It was during one of those powerful spiritual encounters that I remember Dr. Mark Hanby saying, if you want what your bishop has, you must do what he's doing. Well, Bishop Dennis was lying prostrate on the floor, worshiping God. So you know what we did, and the rest is history. It was obvious that when Bishop Dennis established and became presiding prelate of Kingdom Fellowship Covenant Ministries that I would attend the annual conferences. I went to every one. I remember sharing with Bishop Fred McKeithen, who was then Pastor McKeithen of Christian Tabernacle, that it was a matter of spiritual survival that I disconnect from the United Holy Church of America. So it, it would not, I mean, I was still holding on to the truths that I had learned because I was brought up in the United Holy Church. I was filled with the Holy Ghost in the United Holy Church. But it was then necessary for me to connect completely with KFCM. Well, Pastor McKeithen 
respond when I went to him was, if you are leaving, then I'm going to. One who had lived his life in the United Holy Church almost. Christian Tabernacle transitioned from the United Holy Church of America and entered it into a covenant relationship with KFCM under the leadership of Bishop Ralph L. Dennis. Pastor Fred McKeithen was also elevated to titular bishop for services already rendered. It was Bishop Dennis who aided us in making a smooth transition. In November of that same year, it was Bishop Dennis who installed me as pastor of the then Christian Tabernacle. In 2004, Christian Tabernacle activated what we were absorbing from KFCM by sponsoring a global leadership summit of which the then Deacon Leander McEwen organized. It was Bishop Dennis, of course, who was the primary presenter. A great number of pastors and leaders located in all of the DMV came to receive impartation from him. I heard someone say he's well known. Yes, he's well known. In 2006, Bishop Fred McKeithen went home to be with the Lord, and it was Bishop Dennis who eulogized him. Due to our health yet experiencing God's healing power in 2009, I was led by the Holy Spirit to gradually release my pastoral assignment. In 2009, it was Bishop Dennis who my husband and me went to meet with Bishop Dennis to share with him our heart about this new transition. You'll have to read my book, New Mercies, for the rest of the story. Hallelujah. It's still available. Back in 2007, the church name was officially changed from Christian Tabernacle to Higher Place of Praise. It was Bishop Dennis who installed the then elders Paul and Frederick Cleveland, hallelujah, as pastors of Higher Place of Praise Ministries and thus the beginning of the transition to Cornelia Congregation and now Cornelia Community, hallelujah. They were installed as pastors from elders to pastors. And most recently, and this is, this is amazing, most recently, although not physically present, the ceremony in which the apostles were affirmed, Bishop Dennis had a whole lot to do with it. It was Bishop Dennis who significantly invo was involved in the apostolic affirmation and commissioning, and he was not even there. In closing, I want to share an excerpt from the 60th anniversary celebration of Christian Tabernacle, which reads, this was in the actual program, and he was not there. A special thank you to Bishop R.L. Dennis from the then pastors, Pastors Jacqueline McEwen and Bishop Fred McKeithen and the entire Christian Tabernacle membership. We appreciate your encouragement and untiring support to this ministry. Still do. Bishop, you have, and it went out, hallelujah. That's why I don't like... <laughs> I do not like technology. Hallelujah. It went out just then. But what it was is we were sharing our love, especially for Bishop and all that he had imparted into the ministry and where we were expecting to go because of his leadership. Then it was back 60th anniversary of Christian Tabernacle that we were writing about him and we're still writing about Bishop Dennis we love him so much he is a friend of mine he is my father 
<laughs> he is, what can I say? He is my covering. He is someone that you can go to at any time. And it's amazing, out of all the churches that he has, he will come quickly somehow when you're in trouble. Hallelujah. So I introduce to you Archbishop Ralph L. Dennis. I don't know if the dance ministry, are you, they coming? Amen. They are coming before he comes. But let's give him uh, a rounding applause. Hallelujah. The dance ministry will be coming. God bless. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give the Lord worship. The Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, do you want Jesus? Come on, do you long for Jesus? You see your desire. Come on, tell him, Lord, you're my desire. I long for you. My heart panteth after you, Lord. My soul longs for you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. All we want, Jesus. All we're after. You're our desire. It's all cries out. Oh, 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 I want Jesus. This world and give me him. Come on, if I should cry out, somebody let it out. Say, oh, oh, I want Jesus. Oh, oh, I want him. We cry out to you, Lord. Oh, only, only Jesus. Take this world and give me him. Take this world and give me him. The first says, no more mixture. Give me the God of Scripture. No more idols or lesser lovers. No substitute will ever do. Hey, there's nothing more I'll ever pursue. Oh, yeah. So we cry. Oh, I want Jesus. Our souls are crying out. Oh, I want Him. You're all we desire, Lord. Oh, only Jesus. Take this world and give me him. Take this world and give me him. Oh, we cry out all. Oh, 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 oh. I want you, Jesus. You're all we want, Jesus. But you have to. I want him. We desire, Lord, oh, only Jesus. Oh, take this world, hey, and be from a time. Hey, we're crying out, Lord. Oh, oh, I want. Oh, the heart to desperate 
Point to yourself, say, Shine on me. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. My, my, my. That's a good place to give the Lord your spirit, connect with His spirit, spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit. All my life you have been faithful. Somebody help me to sing it. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of God. 
Lift those hands and sing it again. All of my life, all of my life, you have been faithful. Glory. All my life, you have been so, so good. As you continue to play that, just connect with the Holy Spirit. Use your prayer language if you don't mind. Just talk to the Father. His presence is here. His glory is filling the temple. Hallelujah. Lord, accomplish your purpose in this place. our hearts to you in extreme gratification for the God that you are. We yield ourselves to you in worship. How great thou art. How great thou art. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Iko Shataya. Iko Hallelujah. <coughs> we bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you for filling this place with your spirit. Your glory, your glory. Let us see your glory here today. Ooh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Your goodness is running after me. You're a faithful God, and we bless your name. Thank you for Paul and Freddie. Thank you for these 12 years. 12, a strategic moment in time. 12, speaking of apostolic order, apostolic government. 12. Thank you for this season just slightly before Rosh Hashanah. Here we are entering into a new dimension of your presence. Keshabaya. Isa. Grab somebody's hand and say, We're stepping in. I didn't hear you. Come on, grab somebody and say, We're stepping in. We're stepping in. Stepping in his presence. Koshima Baya Sotarabaya. I can't remain where I am any longer. I got to step in his presence. He's beckoning me to come. 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 So here I am. I'm going to step in his presence. He told Shibaya. Radanayo Rabaiko. He is my Shandai King.
he's telling me to come. Here I am, Lord. I come just as I am. Here I am just as I am. Here I am just as I am. I'm coming to you, Jesus. I'm going to step into that new place. Unfamiliar, unknown. I have no experience there, but because you told me to come, I'm coming. Ooh, Jesus. you will speak to us through your word for your word is a lamp unto our feet is a light unto our pathway our hearts our way needs to be illuminated our way needs to be illuminated lamp unto our feet a light unto our pathway illuminate the path show us where to go show us how to arrive in that place you set before us we humbly come in Jesus name speak to us now speak to me that I may speak to them if you don't speak to me I won't speak to them Enlarge our capacity that we can receive your word rather simplistically or complex we can receive your word through the power of the Holy Spirit that has readied our hearts my heart has been made ready to receive your word hallelujah decree unto the Lord my heart has been made ready to receive your word to tell the Lord again the same thing tell him again my heart to the third time my heart has been made ready to receive your word in Jesus name amen amen yeesh I uh, if you weren't so hungry for a word, I'll just worship. <laughs> that's my place. That's my place. I have show by Korataye. Thank you, Jesus. Kuto Sabaye. I know time is of the essence. If you, I, ah, whew, man, I feel God in here. So I'm trying to chill a little bit right now. He tai show, mi kora mandaya, roshita basandari ando kamaya, rebioso mandaya. Mm. I want to thank you for inviting me to share this 12th anniversary with you, uh, the Lord's people. On today, uh, I have big fan of Paul and I won't, maybe I shouldn't call her by my, our pet name yeah. Paul and Bootsy right? <laughs> <coughs> for years I ain't know her real name I just <laughs> I just 
thought her name was Bootsy. <laughs> but they have an affectionate place in my life. I've, I've probably known Bootsy since she was a little girl down at 1510 West Lafayette Avenue in ba West Baltimore under the guidance of her grandma mother, Ethel McKeith. And that was back. I, will, I start I start saying what year it was then, but I better, I better. <laughs> I'm going to spare you this. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> But certainly we honor them today as our honorees. Let's give God glory for them. Thank God for them today. We bless God for them. Yes, Paul and Freddie. Cleveland, we thank God for you today. Amen. For overseers, Leander and Jackie McEwing, we love you so much. We love you and honor you. Amen. Have a lot of pastors here today. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I, I sort of feel like all of them are some some way my children. Some some dotted line way. <laughs> they got their own parents, both naturally and spiritually, but I I claim them too. So uh, but I'm glad they're here today. For the host pastor of this house I just met. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for affording us this. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do my best to leave a glory cloud here. I'm going <laughs> to leave a cloud behind. Amen. But I also see Bishop Carrie Surratt, my, my, my eldest spiritual daughter. <laughs> <laughs> she says she's the real baby girl. <laughs> and my eldest spiritual son, Bishop Douglas Williams, is here today with Mother Williams. We thank you. We love 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 you. Amen. Elder. Elder Wheatley and Elder Shaw followed me from, sort of followed me, I suppose, from, from Kingdom Worship Center today. They, we were at church this morning together. Hey, thank you for coming. Thank you. And to familiar faces and names forgotten, I'm glad to see you today. I got a bad girl here. Yeah, I got a bad girl here as well today. Her name is Tanya. <laughs> she knows I love her dearly. That's, that's my bad girl. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you why I call her that, but she knows. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm gonna get right into the word of the Lord. Elder Frieda, thanks for your invitation that you sent to invite us. Um, I, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. I'm not going to preach, preach today, so I think we're beyond, we're about to outgrow the season of hoopers. I think very, very quickly we're going to find out hoopers are going to be without a crowd. Because there's a rising a generation that wants to know what you're saying and what does it mean and how they can apply it. Pastor White, congratulations on your doctoral. He, last time I saw him, he was Elder White. Now he's Dr. Elder White. <laughs> congratulations. That's a good, that's a good accomplishment. And we're great. Spade, I love you, man. I love you. He, came in my house and got one of my daughters and I'll ever see her more. He just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when I raise the offering today, be kind. <laughs> Pay for your daughter. For my... <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I want to share with you what's in my heart. I, I'm not, I got a lot in my spirit, but it's not formatted quite like a sermon would be outlined exegetically or 
I may not even present it hermeneutically like you would expect, but I will give you some things that I need you to hear about the times in which we're living, and I'm going to address them as it were to these two apostolic leaders here, but not to them solely because I want you to listen in because as I address some things to them, there's going to be some application you're going to need to make for your own life to them because it's their anniversary. Uh, is this your first apostolic anniversary? I, I thought so, and I'm glad it is because I want to lay some groundwork. I want to talk about some things that I believe the Lord would have us to understand and know for this season. If you allow me today, I want to share with you from the subject, discerning the apostolic. I, I was blessed last week to speak twice in a conclave that was uh, held at the Marriott waterfront in Baltimore. By the, in the summit was called the new construct, I'm sorry, the construct for a new reality. It's called the construct for a new reality. It was hosted primarily by a group of apostolic Pentecostals who were revisiting their dogma, their doctrine, their principles, their ways of worship, and seeing if some of the things they had historically taught and expected of their people were still applicable. Or should we be re looking at some things? Should some things perhaps be renewed, re-examined? Yeah, it's a good approach, huh? You think? Well, I think we all need to do that. And, and, and it was a very interesting because the contextuality took us back historically all the way uh, to pre-Azusa and how the evolution of the apostolic church evolved, of course, out of Methodism into holiness and then holiness and the splits in holiness for various and sundry reasons, color being one, baptism being another. <laughs> and now we got all these splintered groups who say we're saved, uh, and one group said you're saved by this way, the other saved by that and that one. And the co concern became, are we all saved? Regardless of how we came, are we all saved? And why aren't we all saved? <laughs> and if we're not, why not? Good, good, good group, good, good setting. So, and I'm going to share that with you because uh, in this season, uh, being, and, and I, I never told them, I, I, I spoke twice, spoke on Thursday, spoke again on yesterday, and uh, <laughs> I never told them I was not a, a, apostolic, i.e. Jesus only. I just perpetrated. I just, uh, they invited me. They didn't, they didn't ask me. <laughs> so, but I, I listen, I listen, and I listen very intently uh, because I do believe that the Lord is coming for one church. I do believe. But to facilitate that, I also believe that we might, we're in a season where we have to become more refined in the understanding of who we are as members of that church. My God, <laughs> members of that church. It doesn't matter if you're a leader in a local setting, you're a member of the church, capital C. <laughs> the capital C church, Lord have mercy. We're servants of the most high God. And, and in order to uh, give him what he's looking for and what he's asking for in this season, I'm praying that we'll be able to refine our commitment to him by being able to better define who we are. If I, can, if I can better define who I am, I can refine what I'm offering to him. Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah, by definition, if I know who I am, good God Almighty, hallelujah, then I'm not just going to give him anything. I'm going to give him what he wants. I'm going to give him what he requires. 
So I'm going to talk about discerning the apostolic today. And, and though you may not be uh, consider yourself to be an apostle or, an apost or apostolic, generally, I think there's some things you can get from this and, and hear from this as I go into the word of the Lord today. I, 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 was, I made some notes and, and uh, got some pre-notes, so I got a little, little uh, gathering to do here. Uh, but if you don't mind... Uh, just listen closely. Discerning, let's talk about that. And then I'm going to go give you some scriptures. The whole idea of discerning is having or showing good judgment. It's showing insight and understanding. Being insightful, perceptive, prudent, sagacious, wise. It's, it's all part of discerning. If I look at that word discerning, it, it implies to me that there may is an awareness of that which may not be obviously seen by others. It has to be discerned. <laughs> uh, which means some part of it may be hidden. If I have to discern it, it may not be obvious or blatant. So I have to discern it. So perhaps maybe right there you can establish that this is a season of spiritual discerning. You hear me? I hope you hear me. Not discerning of spirits. That's a whole different gift. <laughs> I'm talking about discerning or understanding or coming face to face with the presence, the purpose, the power of God in your life. In your life. Let me, I, I keep on going this. Discerning the apostolic. The apostolic. The apostolic has gotten a name over the years because... When I was growing up, apostolic mean, uh, meant that, first of all, you didn't fellowship with Trinitarians. Yeah. If you were oneness, you didn't fellowship with those who were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank God that demon has been conquered for the most part. For the, there's a few exceptions but the Lord's working on them. <laughs> Hallelujah. It, it, it met a certain way of dress. met a certain way of, uh, of behaving. <laughs> you didn't wear certain things. You didn't go certain places. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, like, a, <laughs> Daddy, why can't I go to the circus? Because they got half-naked women there. That's why I want to go. Y'all excuse me. <laughs> he, that's the whole point of wanting to go, Daddy. <laughs> excuse me. Okay. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Okay. I, I'm sorry because some of you are more saved than me. I'm sorry. <laughs> season let's discern that the purpose of the end time apostolic calling has to do greatly with bridging the gap between the sacred and the secular bridging the gap between the what sacred and the secular that's what much of the apostolic calling is in this season. Oh, God Almighty. When we have cultural challenges that the church is a little hesitant to even discuss. When there are situations arising that have always been present in the church. But now that they're becoming more blatant, we have now struggled with how do we address them. <laughs> uh, this may be the season for you. To take that one bathroom and convert it to a non-gender bathroom. Y'all won't like me today. <laughs> I'm talking about discerning the apostolic and what the apostolic is called to do. <laughs> There's a way you can embrace without affirming. Lord Jesus. Most people think if you embrace me, you're automatically affirming me. Not so. <laughs> I embrace you because of your uh, humanity. 
I embrace you because I'm called to love you. Come on, talk to me. Regardless of who you are, what you look like, I'm called to love you. So I must embrace you. And, I, and don't confuse my embracing you as affirming you. Because, <laughs> because though I embrace you, I may not necessarily agree with your lifestyle and how you live. Are oh, y'all still here? That's nothing new. <laughs> That's always been the case in the church. My God Almighty. But bridging the gap between the sacred and the secular can be a bit misleading. It can cause us to think that the intention is to eliminate the divide. Whenever we think of bridging, we think the intention there is to eliminate the divide, to meld the two sides together. My God Almighty, hallelujah, my, 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 my. Uh, and cause there to be no longer a gap. Mm -hmm. Hope you're hearing me. But the true purpose of the bridge is not to get rid of the gap. As a matter of fact, the bridge accepts the fact that there is a gap. <laughs> but the bridge allows me to traverse the gap. To get from one side of it to the other side of it. Lord have mercy. Ah, <laughs> ah yeah, 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 yeah. If I understand my spiritual assignment, <laughs> I, I don't have to get rid of the gap. I don't have to bring truckloads of dirt from somewhere else to get rid of this gap. Just give me the wherewithal to get from that side to this side. <laughs> oh, teach me how to traverse it. Teach me how to get to the other side. My God Almighty. And that's the season we're in that I believe the apostolic is being called to. I, I, I'm going to start, in, and I've already started, but let me go to the Bible now, to the first book of the Bible. There's only two perfect chapters in the whole Bible. Chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Genesis are the only two perfect chapters in the Bible. After that, everything becomes subject to sin. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Apostolically, I'm talking to Paul and, 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 and uh, Freddie now. Because we're discerning the apostolic. Chapter 1, verse 26. Oh, we can go back verse 26. And God had a desire. It was something in the mind of God. God imagined something. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let us give them a reign of authority. And I'm, I'm, I'm translating. Y'all staying with me? Uh -huh. And in verse 27, and God made man. Uh, in the image of God made he them male and female made he them. <laughs> Don't get confused by that. That's, that's man in his state of the bara. The bara of God. This is where man was created. The bara of God. This man... And not separate from woman yet. They're one and the same because God is dealing with them from a spiritual perspective. Before you get to deal with God naturally, you got to deal with him spiritually. Yes. Yes. Many people who try to deal with him naturally never get what they're looking for because you're coming the wrong way. God is a spirit. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, here, here we are. He, were, he made the male and female. He made the male and female. That's, this is Adam, male and female. And he blesses them. Note the pronoun is them, plural. He blesses them. I mean, verse 28. He blesses them and says, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion over, over things that are in the sea, things that are in the air, things that are in the earth three dimensions of dominion <laughs> things in the air things in the sea 
Well, things in the sea, things that are in the air, things that are on the earth. I'm going so. I'm going somewhere with this. This is the first indication of the five-fold ministry that we talk about so much in Ephesians 4. Because this is where we see God giving man five ministry purposes. Four of them are to do, and the fifth one is to have. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Be fruitful. Do that. Multiply. Do that. Uh, replenish do that subdue do that listen to the last one have dominion have, it. have, it. have dominion good God money <laughs> I, I wish we could read some of that in the original language which infers that if you do these four the fifth one will come automatically <laughs> but, but he never gave them an assignment until he first blessed them my God, my, and anything that you need to, God blesses it, you have grace for it. Come, I need somebody to help me. If it's an assignment God has given you, you have grace for it. It might look difficult. It might seem difficult. You may have to deal with difficulty. But if the assignment is from the Lord, he has given you grace for it. Witness to your neighbors, I have grace for every assignment. Some of y'all know that's my mantra. That's my mantra. I live by that mantra. I have grace for every assignment. Whatever the Lord has given me to do, I've got grace for. Hallelujah. And my ultimate litmus test is that when the grace is removed, I've got to have courage to quit the assignment. Woo. <laughs> Once the grace has lifted, it's a fool's errand to consider to continue the assignment. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Because the assignments that God gives you cannot be done on your own. No assignment the Lord gives you can you accomplish on your own. You need God's grace for the assignment. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Uh, uh, ay, 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 ay. Let's see if y'all can, I hope y'all can stay with me for a moment. In, in, in this text, and as I'm looking at it here, and, and these five gifts are, are and I, don't, I won't go there today because the Lord's leading me another way, but they are uh, in the reverse of Ephesians 4. They're in the reverse of Ephesians 4 because sin reverses things. Sin always reverses things. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. So in the book of Genesis, we start with uh, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. But by the time we get to the ascension of Christ, it's reversed. Now the foundation has to be relayed. Come on. Yes. Ephesians chapter 3. On the foundations of apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Yes. <laughs> has to be relayed, my God. Because it was disrupted in the garden. Good God. <laughs> ah. <laughs> And now when we look at this new order, apostles uh, and prophets and amazingly teachers, amazingly teachers are the primary functional gifts, not ministry gifts, functional gifts. Lord have mercy. <laughs> the functional gifts are found in 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. When God builds the house, he sets first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. And after that, the workings of miracles and healings and helps and administration. Y'all still here? <laughs> Those are functional gifts. My God, not ministry gifts. How do you know they're functional gifts? They're because God gave them. God gave them. Because God gave them. And in verse 6 of that same chapter of 1 Corinthians 12, in verse 6, God gives operations. Come on. God gives up their diversities. Come on, y'all still here? Their diversities of the gifts, but by the same spirit. Come on. There's differences in ministration, but by the same Lord. But there's also differences in operations. 
But who helps there? God does that. So verse 6 and verse 28 correlate. So if verse 28 says God gives, God gives what? Operations. God gives functions. And you know verse 28 are not functions. And I'm just taking you just as if you know the Bible. I'm so sorry. I should have told you to turn to it. <laughs> what an assumption. I'm just acting like you know the Bible. <laughs> verse, verse, verse 28. Verse 28. It has to be operations because uh, uh, miracles aren't people. Helps aren't people. Come on, y'all still here? Healing is not people. <laughs> it's an operation. It's a function. Good God Almighty. So there's a difference between your apostolic function and your apostolic ministry. Good God Almighty. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, and in this season where I'm laying hands on a lot of people who want to be affirmed apostolically, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling them that if you need to function apostolically, I don't need to lay hands on you. You just function apostolically. Lord have mercy. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> but if you feel like that you're called to minister there, I may need to affirm it because in ministry, you have to also recognize you're ministering to somebody. Whew. Functionality frequently doesn't have a name on it, doesn't have a face to it. I need some help in here now. Lord have mercy. But when you're talking about ministry, you're talking about a face of somebody. Who, who, who are you ministering to? What are their needs? Why do you feel like you are equipped to meet those needs? Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. <laughs> so nothing to be taken lightly. Oh, oh my God Almighty. I, I, I really feel like preaching, but I'm going I'm to stay real local and calm and, and genteel today. I, I promise you, by the grace of God, I'm going to do that. The problem we have frequently is system that we all operate in is a pastoral system. <laughs> and the pastoral system was never really, really ordained by God. I got the wrong church today. <laughs> was pastors? Absolutely. Pastors are one of the five. We would never, ever to, to even try to get rid of pastors. Come on, talk to me. But nothing in the oracle says that pastoring is the CEO or the chief leader of the church or the dominant gift. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Constantine did that in 313 AD. Constantine did that. He put a pastor in every church so he could control the church. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. And ever since that, the church has been a little warped. Because why is that? Because pastors are too caring to be governmentally controlled or operated. <laughs> pastors are more concerned about protecting sheep keeping sheep come on talk to me loving on sheep that's what pastors do and thank God for them because we all have needed that hello we have all have needed that and I pray that that gift will never go away hallelujah but in this strategic moment that we're in trying to bridge the gap between the secular and the sacred Lord have mercy. My God, I need something stronger than a pastoral anointing. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. I don't need you to tell me it's all right, baby, because you're just that kind of loving person. I need you to tell me, get it together. Yeah. <laughs> I need you to tell me, go sit down somewhere. I need you to tell me, come back to the altar. I need you to tell me, get back in the word. I need to tell me, separate myself from those who have this influence on me. Oh, hallelujah. I don't need you pampering me as a pastor does. <laughs> Do we still need the pastor? Absolutely. Please don't get me wrong. That gift will never go away. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I can assure you that in this season... It should not be the dominant gift at all times in the house. 
And neither should the pastor be a panacea. Neither should the pastor be a panacea. Everybody's answer to everybody's problem at everybody's, anybody's time. Come on, talk to me. Hallelujah. My God. Oh my. <laughs> and so I, I, I won't stay here because most of y'all heard me preach this and teach this like this for a long time. I just is who I is. <laughs> but my, I, I'm going to add to my subject today as, a, as we're talking about discerning the apostolic. I want to talk about it from this perspective, a time to ascend. Just remind your neighbor, say it's a time to ascend. Uh, he, <laughs> now, you may have to close your eyes and look at your neighbor and say that real good. Say, don't be afraid to ascend. Don't be afraid to ascend. <laughs> I, I want to tell you a story, but I'm afraid I miss you. <laughs> yeah. There was a flock of ducks sitting by the pond. And they look up and there's a flock of geese flying south, making their squawk noise and flying in formation. And the ducks look up and says, whew, we should do that. Uh, the main duck says to the other ducks, we can't do that. We don't have wings like they have. We can't fly like that. So the ducks decided, said, uh, okay, then let's go to flight school. Let's go to flight school. They found a flight school and they went to flight school and took up lessons in flying. They did very well. Theory, they got the theory. They passed their practicum and they finished well, finished at the head of the class. These ducks were taught in flying school how to fly. They got the graduation, got their honors. Now they are certified flyers. Everybody applauds them, congratulate them for going to flight school. And they felt so good. They felt so good. Now that it was over, they walked back home. After they learned how to fly, what did they do? They walked back home. Because no matter what you learn how to do until you use what you know, it is no good to you at all. It's time for us to ascend out of a place where we are locked into just because it's harder to transition. <laughs> transition is not easy, but it's rewarding. And because rewards are often uh, not easily seen from where we sit, we often uh, refuse the difficulty that we sense that transition has to stay comfortable where we are. But I believe in this season, the Lord is calling us to a place of ascending. Say ascending. I want to read. And, and I, I, I hope y'all just allow me to do, follow the leading of the Lord in my spirit as I do this. Uh, I, I want to read uh, from uh, Acts chapter 1. I want to read from Acts chapter 1. Uh, and if you don't mind Acts chapter 1, I'm just going to read verse 9. The whole idea of ascending is to go which way? Up. To go up. Somebody have verse 9 because I don't have my Bible. But we just read verse 9, whatever translation you have. If you have J, King James, that's fine. That's good. Anybody? Anybody? Everybody. <laughs> Somebody. 
and when he has spoken these words, uh, when he has spoken these things, while they beheld, while they beheld he was taken up. And a cloud received them out of sight. Let me, I'll connect the dots between where we are about discerning the apostolic because the apostolic really becomes the benchmark. It becomes the stone that all of these other gifts are found on because the apostolic is the ultimate strength. I represent often the hand to use it. Uh, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, and the strength of the hand is not in these four fingers. It's when the th thumb locks into it. If you try to hit somebody with just these four fingers, you're likely to break your hand. But if you lock your th thumb into it, and I mean really pull on it, you can feel that if you do it right. You feel it all the way up your, your arm because that's where the strength, the power is. Because the church has been hesitant to accept the prophetic and the apostolic as if those seasons are over because they don't keep reading. I'm concerned in this season, and I'll leave this, I'll be as short as I can, uh, uh, let you go home. Uh, hopefully the Ravens has already won. Uh, the, I'm not sure the commanders were losing early. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus, in this scripture, was about to ascend. And I believe that that's the order of today as we understand the apostolic. My call is for you to come into a new place. That's my apostolic mandate. That is what I require of you to shift from where you've been, regardless of how uncomfortable it might be, Find your place of your ultimate destiny. <laughs> and, and that's not always about changing churches. Most of the time it's about changing mindsets. Lord, I wish I had some help here today. <laughs> Most of the time that, that difficulty takes place right here in your head. <laughs> because once I start to think differently... I'm apt to respond differently. And once I respond differently, listen to this, the crowd around me will be a different crowd. Lord have mercy. Some people are still with you because you're responding the way you've always responded. But when you start to respond according to what you're hearing now, Lord have mercy, those who are not supposed to be there will probably go. But those who are supposed to be with you will also probably come. I got the wrong church today. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I, I cannot be afraid of transition. I cannot be afraid of change. Hallelujah. I got to know the voice of the Lord and follow it. Now, let me, let me get back to ascension. Let me get back to that. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I got so much going on in my spirit. Hallelujah. The problem with us accepting ascension is that we despise dying. <laughs> oh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind getting to this point in life um, because there are several crucial steps to me getting here I wouldn't mind getting to this place where I feel like I'm in an ascended place but one of the prerequisites before I get there means I've got to go through some processes that preclude or that come before ascension and one of them is dying Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we don't like dying. I wish I had some help in today. Uh, we, uh, and I'm not talking about physical death now. I'm talking about spiritually and to things that are, 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 are hindrances to the way we walk with God. I'm talking about things of the soul that disrupt our relationship with God. Lord, uh, we, we, we don't like necessarily the crucifying process. I wish I had this one person to help me. Hallelujah. My God Almighty. And yet Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 31, the, the, the 
B clause there. He says, I die daily. <laughs> I, don't, I don't die once uh, or twice I die every day <laughs> and I'm here to tell you today that in the life of most believers now you're finding something every day to die to my, <laughs> whoo, my God am I, uh, some things you have already determined I can no longer allow that to live come on I can no longer that, let that be a, a, a controlling thing in my life I must die to these desires, to these. Come on, are y'all helping me today? My God, I'm a, I die daily. I die daily. <laughs> uh, but that's a little strange because the question becomes, how can you die every day? How can you die every day? You can only die every day if you're being resurrected each time you die. Each time I die, I'm being resurrected. Lord have mercy. <laughs> My God Almighty. <laughs> Ooh. But when I, was, when I died, I was, I was buried. Because what flies die is buried. Y'all here? <laughs> and all of us have a real disdain for the idea of being buried alive. <laughs> so if you're going to bury me, let me die first. My God Almighty. Oh, dear Jesus. Helen. But the thing about being buried is it's never resurrected the way it was buried. Come on. The Bible says it's sown in corruption. But it's raised in incorruption. Lord have mercy. <laughs> oh my God. I, and I could stay right there on, on, on first 15 chapter of, of, of Corinthians, first Corinthians, but I, I gotta I gotta keep moving because I gotta get out of here. I, I, I need you to hear in this season that there's something in your life that the Lord is causing you to accept the fact that dying is not that bad. Ooh, my God, if I know that dying is not the end. Lord have mercy. <laughs> the, the ultimate defeat of death means my victory. So I get to a point where after a while I have nothing else to die to. Lord, I hope somebody help me here. <laughs> my, so this resurrection is a resurrection now where I'm resurrected into a new life. He is resurrecting us into a new life. Come on, somebody prophesy. A new life, a new life, a new life. My desires are different. My ways are different. My attitude is different. My mindset is different. My design, come on. The things I like, different, different. I'm resurrected. I'm a brand new man now. Woo. Hallelujah. I'll be resurrected into a new life. <laughs> the problem with resurrection my good pastor, the problem with resurrection is that it does not give way immediately to ascension. I would love it if, I, if uh, after dying, I was resurrected and immediately I, was ascend, I can ascend. <laughs> but after resurrection, I didn't get a chance to ascend immediately. I had to spend 40 days, are y'all here, in the midst of those who knew me before I died, knew me <laughs> when I got buried, knew me, come on, <laughs> uh, uh, when, I, when I got in the grave and I was no longer there, but now that I've been resurrected, I've got to prove to them that it's me. I wish I had some help. <laughs> Be between resurrection and ascension, there's always a time of proving. You always have to prove to somebody that you are not the same person you were the last time they saw you. <laughs> I, I think you can carry me too fast. I, <laughs> old man, gonna slow it down there. <laughs> My God. Uh, uh, I hope you're hearing me. I hope you because let, you, you, are you listening to him? The Bible says he came back and appeared unto them forty days. He walked around in their midst, and the Bible says he had he showed them 
infallible proofs. That's Bible. Infallible proofs, which means they could not be debated that this is Jesus. Lord have mercy. <laughs> we know the most popular one when he appears in the midst of them eating and, and Thomas, who wasn't there, didn't get a chance to recognize or see him like the first group did. So later he appears under Thomas. Y'all, y'all know that story. <laughs> what does Thomas want to do? He wants proof. He wants proof that this is you. Show me your hands. Let me stick my, my fingers in your side. Let me see where they nailed you. I'm going somewhere with this. Because one of the great, great tests and trials of your process with God is trying to prove to people that you're not who you used to be. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Good God Almighty. <laughs> and this is Jesus we're talking about. He sets the pattern. He sets the pattern for us. We always follow the Lord's pattern. So there's death. There's burial. There's resurrection. And now there are 40 days. Y'all know the number 40? What's the number 40? Test and trials. Absolutely. Proving things to you. Good God Almighty. He had to prove that this was him. And I'm moving right into the text now. (laughs) <laughs> and while he talked to them, and while he shared with them, and while they examined him, good God Almighty, now the 40th day had ended. <laughs> I feel like preaching right there. Good God Almighty. <laughs> what do you do when your trials end? And God is now ready to cause you to ascend. My God. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Well, while he talked to them, while they talked to him, while they was there chatting, he he is taken up. Are, are y'all there in the text with me? He's taken up. They look at him. They observe him while he is taken up. He ascends into a high place. I feel like preaching. Woo. <laughs> My God. Uh, if that's not E flat, put me there. <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to need that. I'm... Listen, I need you to hear this. I need you to hear this because it will it will help you. It will help you. Uh, uh, when he began to ascend, the observers, the critics, those who had to have proof that it was him, those who even challenged, why are you still here? Is it time for you to set up your kingdom? Lord have mercy. They thought that this was the moment when he would set up his kingdom. (laughs) Uh, And he says, the the time of my kingdom is reserved for my father to designate. Not mine, it's his. (laughs) And he is taken up while they're watching. I am prophesying to somebody today that while for familiars, where the familiar crowd is watching you, the Lord is about to cause you to ascend. Lord have mercy. I feel God in here. Hallelujah. (laughs) And they gazed at him while he was ascending. To the extent that those who watched him says, you men, why stand ye here gazing? The same Jesus that you see taken up shall in like matter return. Uh, Are y'all still here? We're connecting the dots. Here, here, here's the, the thing that I want to leave with you today and, and hopefully it will help you because this is a calling of the apostolic season and the apostolic season draws in it the specificity of all the other gifts to become fluid not in a few people in headship but for every member of the congregation Lord heaven. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Discerning the apostle is not about finding two people who will lead or three people or four people who will lead apostolically. It's about whether or not I can commission you uh, to go into city hall with an apostolic anointing. <laughs> Lord heaven. And there take rule. 
there judge kindly. Are y'all listening? <laughs> My God Almighty. <laughs> but in order to do that, we've got to be willing that wherever the Lord assigns us, we have a yes to do it. I'm saying this is your season to ascend. My God Almighty. Hallelujah. Because the timing which we're living in, there is a utter requirement that we understand how to discern, and I used that word again, I used it earlier, how to discern wheat from tear. How do I discern wheat from tear? I cannot do it from a carnal place. I've got to do it from an ascended place. I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost closing because I know it's Sunday afternoon. It's nap time. <laughs> Unless you're like me, you haven't even had a meal yet. <laughs> so for me, it's eating time. But I need you to hear this because I'm going to let you go. The wheat and the tear must grow together. But in order for the wheat and tear to grow together, listen to this very carefully. You must rid yourself of an absolute church mindset. That parable begins by the kingdom of heaven is likened unto. What is likened unto? The kingdom of heaven. Not the church. Not the church. And if we're going to move and shift from a church mindset into a kingdom mindset, we must be apostolically and prophetically led. Lord, Hammer. <laughs> the pastoral anointing is a keeping anointing. Come on, talk to me. Pastors want to keep as many members as they can. That's the shepherding anointing. Lord have mercy. An apostolic anointing is a sending anointing. Oh my, I just lost somebody. <laughs> An apostolic church is not trying to keep all the members. You're trying to empower them. You're trying to in, uh, 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 invest them. Come on, employ them. Deploy them my, for an assignment beyond the four walls. Yeah. <laughs> Some people that come to you are not supposed to stay. You're supposed to empower them to leave and not necessarily to open another church. But empower them to be on the school board. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Empower them to work for the liquor board. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be so saved. I used to be so saved. That when I was working my way through high school and the first couple of years of, of college... I worked at a grocery store. I was so saved that I felt condemned when the man says, I need a pack of Newports. And I touched those Newports and gave them to him. I said, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. I, I, I'm, I'm selling this, these Newports to this man, and I shouldn't be doing this. I was that saved. <laughs> But because I needed the job, I kept repenting. Oh. <laughs> ascend, ascend, time to ascend. The problem in ascending is that those who are watching you have had a moment to critique you, but when you go up, they cannot go with you. <laughs> the, one of the greatest problems of ascending is that those who have been observing you that you've had a relationship with you've been affectionate with now that you are going up the best they can do is watch you 
the best they can do is look on you. Come on, I'm right in the book there. <laughs> they, 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 they had an encounter with him, but when he started to ascend, they could only watch him. Ooh. Lord have mercy. And the whole process of ascension was precluded by a time of proving, a time of testing. So many of the tests you've been going through, you know why you got to go through them? Because very soon your 40 days are going to be up. Prophesy to your neighbors, I perceive that very soon your 40 days are going to be up. Your testing will be over. And it will be time to ascend. I am not, I'm not perfectly like Jesus because Jesus went up, just got caught up and said nothing. I think I would have said something like, watch me go up. <laughs> you didn't think I could do this. You didn't think this was me, did you? Watch me go up. Get it in your spirit now because you're going to be able to say that to some people who didn't ever think you would rise out of where you've been. <laughs> it's going to be okay telling the bishop, Dennis says, watch me go up. You thought I would always be like I've been. But this is another season of my life that I'm called into a place of ascension. Why is this about discerning the apostolic? Because unless... The foundation is laid upon apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. All things will remain as they've been. Church, stop fighting the apostolic and prophetic anointings. Most of everywhere you go, people will accept evangelism. They will accept pastoral. They will accept teaching. But we continue to knock. We continue to not believe in the apostolic and the prophetic. As if it's some unknown phenomenon that we cannot grasp. That's the work of the devil. Come on, talk to me. Listen to this carefully and I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I, I had intended not to soak my shirt. I, just, I brought an extra shirt, but I was hoping not to have to use it. Listen to this very carefully. In this season we're living in, you're going to have some situations that will occur in your life where you're going to have to determine do I take the easy road or do I make the hard decision? <laughs> if, I, if I stay where I am, what will be? If I go where I feel like I'm being called, what then? So you're being weighed in the balances. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And you got to hear me now. I'm not, please understand. I'm going to go say this again just to reiterate it. I'm not talking about leaving churches or ministries or even denominational affiliations. I'm talking about leaving a place of comfort. Being charged with a greater responsibility in the earth of making God known. This is a season where you have to depart from that which has been usual and find this unusual place. Apostolic discerning, discerning the apostolic is so ne necessary because, listen to this, you ask, where are the miracles? Anybody ever asked that question recently? Where are the miracles, signs, wonders? Where are they? Where are these gifts in the church? Did you ever think they could not be there? Because they follow the functional construct of what releases them? If he sets first apostles, prophets, and teachers, and then after that, the working of miracles, if those three are not in place, how can miracles happen? 
And, and you go to third world countries where they acknowledge apostles and prophets. Come on. And miracle after miracle takes place. So maybe our own theology have left us wanting. Let's follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and not that of man. I pray today as I am closing that there is still a yes in your heart to trust God for the next in your life. That's my prayer every day as I pray for those who come to my mind, Lord, teach us to be uncomfortable with what you're not comfortable with in our lives. Teach us to deny that which you despise in our lives. Help us to yield to that which you desire, which that you, which you long for in our lives. But in order to do that, here's what I found out. I keep dying over and over again. Whew. Anybody other than me have died more than once? Whew. Lord, I feel God in here. <laughs> and let me ask that anybody more other than me have ever died more than once? I'm talking every time you turn around there's something more to I need to put on the altar I need to put on the cross of Calvary I need to yield to the Lord I need to say yes to gain Lord have mercy hallelujah 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 <clears throat> so what I've learned to do is practice dying encourage your neighbors to practice dying when you practice dying automatically you start to practice resurrection Hallelujah. My God Almighty. And as I practice resurrection, I'm getting closer and closer to my time of ascension. My time. My time of ascension. We ought not to be spending. Here's where you're going to have a problem with this sermon today, perhaps. We ought not to be spending so much time in the earth. This is a season of our lives where we should be spending more time in heaven. You should be transient by now. I feel God in here. <laughs> I said you should be transient now by now. Come on, talk to me. Woo. Positionally, you already seated in heavenly places. Come on. Ephesians 2 and 6. For he has made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Is that what your Bible said? <laughs> Hallelujah. My God Almighty. <laughs> Ooh, but we don't stay there. We won't stay settled there. When Christ ascended, Ephesians 1, 20 through 23, he ascended high above principalities and powers and might. Oh, y'all still, my God Almighty. <laughs> <laughs> he put everything under his feet that is the church that, that's, I, go back and read it when you get a chance my God almighty <laughs> the problem is his kingdom can never come on earth as it is in heaven if we stay in earth too much because I never know what heaven is what heaven requires what heaven looks like come on talk to me Ooh, I know that's how <laughs> you got to hear me in the spirit realm don't judge what I'm saying until you hear me in the spirit realm my God almighty we're spending too much time in the earthly realm and we need to spend more time in the heavenly realm Ooh, that's a consecrated place it's a consecrated place hallelujah it's a place of righteous dwelling. Ooh, glory. Everybody, would you stand with me to now? Would you stand with me? Hallelujah. Mm. Do me a favor, just lift those hands. And if you if you don't mind, just, just use your prayer language for a moment. Talk to him in your prayer language. Lord, I'm ready to this next place of ascension. So help me discern the times and discern this apostolic moment, this prophetic moment. And know what it is I ought to be doing. And help me to do it. Give me the anointing of the sons of Issachar. 
to be able to understand the times and know what it is that we ought to be doing and, and uh, even though we may not be large let me Lord command all my brethren let them be under my commandment because I know what season we're in this is my season of yielding come on somebody talk to the Lord this is my season of yielding this is my season of yes this is my season of yes this is my season where I'm determined to do the hard thing the righteous thing the thing that Lord my flesh has not allowed me to do now Lord I say yes to your will I say yes to your way I surrender my all to you hallelujah hallelujah I want to discern this moment of time. I want to discern this moment of my calling. I want to discern this moment of my purpose. I want to discern this time of my, the plan that you have on my life. And I want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it, Lord. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. I want to yield myself to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is but my reasonable service. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put it in your spirit, Lord. I'm available to you. Lord, I'm available to you. Lord, I'm available to you now. I yield myself to you now. I surrender myself to you now. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I, I, I want to I want to make this declaration of such here. Hear me for a moment here. I release in this house today you to claim and confess who you are in the kingdom of God. I release you this day to confess who you are. Not what you do. Not what you do. Not what you do. Get away from what you do. I release you this house now the understanding of the mind of God concerning each of us that Lord I claim who I am in your kingdom not just Freddie and Paul as being apostles but who, who, who else is apostolic who's prophetic who's evangelistic who's, who's pastoral because if they're if they're really apostolic and that's where they function most of the time who's doing the nurturing who's doing the feeding who's leading to lambing grounds who is leading beside still waters or 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 or, or because the system make them do both and because the system will make you do both and when the lord has called you to one and one only our oh, lord help me today Ooh, Jesus whoever Lord have not answered their assignment I pray now in Jesus name hallelujah that another 24 hours will not go by until they Lord confess who they are in you accept who they are in you claim who they are in you unapologetically receive who they are in you in the name of Jesus this is the discerning of this apostolic moment that the Lord is releasing us into a place of greater glory. Greater glory. In a place of greater glory. In a place of greater glory. Hallelujah. Kushe my side. Hallelujah. Lord, we receive it. All that you have for us. Come just say with me, Lord, I receive all that you have for me. I accept who you say I am. I be who you say I am. I be who you say I am. I be it now. I be nothing else. I be who you say I am. I be it now. I be nothing else. I be who you say I am.
I be it now. I be nothing else. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. Take 15, 20 seconds and just pray for the one on your left and the one on your right, those around you, and release them into the ascended place. Come on, prophesy. You say you release, you release. You release to go where you've never gone. You release to do what you've never done. You release to be who you've never been. Oh, come on, pray for them in the spirit. Decree it, declare it. I don't know the last thing God said to you, but today I decree and declare you release to be what God said. He told Shabbat. No more holding back. No more holding back. Step into it. Step into it. It's the next of God for you. Step into it. Hear God and obey Him. Step into it. Woo. Do it afraid if you have to. Do it afraid if you have to. Do it afraid if you have to. Robo Shiamai So Rabai Kaya. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Lord, I yield to you. I feel God in here. She mama so kurabo she tasai rekorabai daya mi bo shadaya kaya. Hey, God, I love you, Jesus. Jesus, kushi abai sa. I really feel like the Lord wants to stretch somebody today, stretching you out of your comfort zone. Just come on, come on, let him stretch you out of your comfort zone. He called There's a people waiting for you to move. Somebody's waiting for you to make that next step. Close she out of my sire. Hadamai oko. Hallelujah. 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 The way has been made. The way has been made. And the Lord is waiting on us. The Lord is waiting on us. There's a people that does not know God. The bridging of the sacred and the secular is upon us because the wheat and the tear is growing together. The wheat and the tear is growing together. And unless I know who I am, I'm at risk of not discerning the wheat from the tear. There is no real value investing time in tear. So the church has historically whew, wasted time trying to mature tear. You get no return on that investment. Tear is going to be cut up thrown in the fire that's Bible but learn to allow God to use you in discerning tear from immature wheat wheat that still has to be matured spend your time discipling 
Spend your time in spiritual formation. Are y'all listening to me? Koshatat Saya. Hallelujah. And don't worry so much about the tear. Let the tear stay there. This is going to make you very uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are you trying to make everybody in your church saved? Why why you only want a church full of saved people? None of Jesus' disciples were saved. None of Jesus' disciples were saved. None of them were. How could they be? He hadn't been to Calvary yet. Why you want everybody in your church to be saved? Get the sinner in. Create an opportunity to preach the gospel. Glory to Jesus. <coughs> Stop worrying so much if that's a he or a her. Whatever it is. Y'all not going to talk to me. Whatever it is. It needs the gospel. It needs the truth. Y'all going to help me. You're trying to have a pure, holy, sanctified church. Don't try to do God's work for him. I'm sorry, I got the wrong group today. I got the wrong group today. I got the wrong group today. Hallelujah! The same gospel that saved you will save them. Hallelujah. If you're not so afraid of them and you're not so quick to call them tear, who knows what God's working on? Boy, I got the wrong church today. <laughs> See, that's, that's not a sanctify holy message. Because what we're used to, to we want everybody to be saved, baptized, Filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. No. When we ask who's here today, I wish more sinners' hands would go up than unsaved. Come on. How else can we win them? Okay. That's apostolic discernment. That's what understanding the times look like. Hallelujah. May God bless you. <laughs> Says. I'm non-sectarian. Nobody can throw me out. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe it with all my heart. I believe with all of my heart. Why? If you're that saved, why are you so afraid of the unsaved? What is it? What's going on? What's going on? My God Almighty. Hallelujah. And the truth of the matter is some of them who still are trying to find their identity listen to this but are abstaining from that which perplexes them are more saved than some of you speaking in tongues. Okay. I got the wrong church today. <laughs> Because even though something is working in them physiologically or, or psychologically, emotionally, come on, talk to me. They're warring with it. They're fighting it. Come on. Hallelujah. And yet you're yielding to whatever comes your way. I'm sorry. That's a message for a Methodist church. You sanctified people may have no appreciation for that. <laughs> but I'm talking about discerning. Apostles must discern in order to affect the times. The prophetic might be the ones who have their hands on the compass, the barometer, the thermometer. But the apostle needs to know what to do with that. I started in Genesis because the apostolic is there. Because he said, after you've done these four things, I'm going to let you have dominion. And that's what apostles are all about. Making sure that the earth is under the dominion of heaven. 
That's why we pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. If you love the Lord, give him a praise offering. into your next I release you now into the next of God for your life in the name of Jesus I don't know why I feel that thing so heavily I feel it so heavily Koshama Shatasu Baikaya Oh Jesus Kobabach Shulama Glory to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Glory. I will, Lord, I don't want you to miss the next of God. I beg you, Lord. 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 Mama Site Robo Satai Dayan. Ooh, Jesus. Ah, my. Yield myself to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I wish I could lay hands on all of you today and just say receive your next receive what God has purposed in your life go forth now unapologetically go forth now go forth now go forth now who in Jesus name I'm done. I'm done. One more time. If you love the Lord, celebrate him. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're about to get out of here. We're about to get out of here. Hallelujah. But I, I promised fulfill this assignment today and that I would also receive an offering Paul and Bootsy have taken on a major responsibility and let me tell you this an apostolic church would never be a, a mega church a strictly apostolic church would never be a mega church because you are going to do all you can to send forth those who have a calling beyond the walls you don't get bothered if the church is not so full on Sunday as long as the marketplace is full on Monday with those who represent you as a church hallelujah I'm not just counting Sunday morning heads I'm counting those who are sitting at in boardrooms on Monday making decisions come on talk to me Helping with just strategic planning in some place. Cop on the street. Bus driver taking kids to school. An assignment. Driven by purpose. Hallelujah. I pray for you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm so excited. This is the yes. time to give. Yes, it is. God has blessed us so much because yes. we gave. Do you not know one time I remember we gave out of what we didn't have and God gave us yes. the overflow. Not yes. just one time, many times. So we're asking you, take this opportunity with us yes. as we give, you give. What a great opportunity and to worship. What, and what the God gave for us yes we give back to him gotta give it back to and him that's right so it's your opportunity to participate in worship by giving
God bless you and God thank bless. you so much for your giving. Come and be a part of Koinonia Community's in-person worship experience every first, second, and third Sunday at 3 p.m. Service is held at Faith Tabernacle United Holy Church, 300 A Street, Northeast Washington, D.C. See you next week. I'm going to ask now that we, as many of we can, to give a tremendous sacrificial offering. What sacrifice to you may not be sacrificed to me? Uh, some people sacrifice is five dollars. Some people give five hundred and still not be hurting because they they got it. The blessing like that. I want you today to let's give a second offering. I'm not always comfortable doing second offerings, but when I am asked to do it, I always do it the best that I can. As many of you will, can follow me as close as you can, and, and you determine how close that is. Now, I'm going to, no, you don't even have to follow me. I'm going to give an, another 100. We gave 112 earlier. I'm going to give another 100 because I want to make sure they meet their budget today. Give as close as you can to at least half of that. Can you get 50 or 25% of that? 25. That's as far as I'm going. If you can't do either one of those, do the best you can. Do the best you can. Raise it toward heaven. Father, I thank you for those who are willing to give of their substance in order to support the work of ministry in this house. I thank you for Paul. I thank you for Freddie who have accepted the calling up in your life to govern, to lead, to make sure your kingdom is coming in earth. Your will is being done even as it's in heaven. And let us teach us today to leave something that will encourage their hearts, lift their hearts. Let them know that God is with them, never leaving them, neither will he forsake them. And I thank you that even little becomes much when it's placed in the master's hand. Now, Father, we give as much as you've given to us. We give freely, knowing that you love a free, free giver, cheerful giver. Bless it and multiply it. And we'll give you glory for the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, friends of the Lord, friends of the Clevelands, let's welcome to this great desk, sacred desk, apostles Freddie and Paul Cleveland. Let's receive them with a tremendous praise unto the Lord. given to us just the peace of God that passes all understanding hallelujah it's not by our works not at all but I just thank God the lover of my soul that keeps us and keeps us when we don't even know what's going around and all the diseases and all the things that have, have transpired in these years and you know if we're here today by the grace of God, nothing but the grace of God is keeping us. And I just thank God for all of you all continually praying for us. 
and I know you are. And I thank God, a mighty God, that leads us and guides us in all truth. Amen. I just thank God for all of you all. I thank, uh, thank God for our dick, our archbishop. He didn't have to be here. But I just thank God for all of you all that support us. Hallelujah. And my beautiful wife. And I know she has something to say. I'm going to tell you, she's a, she's a broadcaster, you know. <laughs> and I'm a person, I, I, guess, I think I got it from my dad for a person that has not too many words to say. But the Lord is marvelous. And when the Holy Ghost comes in, we got to say, we, God is good. And his mercies, not just mercy, but all of his mercies, continually keeps us and we just thank God for all of you Bishop Dennis we thank God for you and our overseers and our pastors our relatives and all of our friends and we just thank God for being a great God. I'm going to let my wife talk. Say, says something. I know she have a, a book. We thank God for our other ministries that are under us. Stone House. I know they're not here today. Our ministry in India. And we had so many too, as you know, who were killed because of Christ. And um, we just need someone. If you guys can reach out and try to reach him like we're trying to reach him. It's important to us. That's on our heart. Also, you mentioned about, and I don't know if you all got this, about, I call it secession or moving yes. forward, whatever you want to call it, but you're moving into your spot. Well, a few months ago, one, two, three, four months ago now, we, was it four months or three months? We had asked, the Lord had put it on our hearts to have new pastors. Uh, to call out the prophets of the church and call them. Because he said, they know what they do. They just don't know. They need to hear it from you. They walk in it. And walk in it. They were, yeah, they were doing it. So we did that on, this is something, when I hear this message, I'm like, thank you, Lord. That's off the checklist. Thank you, Lord. And so now we're at the next step where we'll be calling you <laughs> for a whole lot of questions. <laughs> Almost, help. Yeah, <laughs> that's where we are. But I wanted you to know that Cornelia, they have been moving forward. I just thank God for you all. We got apostles in our church. We have them already. We have apostles. Wave your hand. We love that's a part. Yes, yes. And, they, and, and, and we have so many ministries within the ministry. You all have so many ministries. And, and we also have the lawyer, the judge. Raise your hand. In our church. That's a blessing. God set that up. That was no, it wasn't by chance that for the moment we're sharing, the, oh gosh, thank you. We're sharing with uh, Pastor Frazier, Dr. Frazier. Doctor. <laughs> and his wife. Uh, it's, it's not by happenstance that we're happening on Capitol Hill. Yes. On Capitol Hill. On Capitol Hill. She's yes. been taking care of a lot of things and, and, and her husband has been taking care of a lot of things, army person. 
and we thank God everything just aligning but that's what I wanted to say that I had to get that out because I know I will forget oh did anybody call this one did anybody so I got to get you while I see you I know y'all thinking about the football it's probably over now no. <laughs> we won sorry Raven we won <laughs> Woo, we won. Uh-oh, she, she got a shout. She couldn't walk a couple of months ago, but she got a shout. For me. <laughs> all right, all right. But we do thank God. Thank God for it. Oh, my cousins here, Dexter. I have to say, Dexter and, and we, it's all right. He calls me Bootsy. I'm calling you Nene. <laughs> I tell him Jesus calls me Bootsy, and I call him Jesus. <laughs> When I get fancy, I say y'all, Yahweh, y'all. <laughs> but I thank God for you all. Um, Bishop Dennis, they're also from Christian Tabernacle. And, and I tell you, old Christian, yes, yes. And if you want to hear somebody minister, Dexter, I don't even know if you realize what, where you are. You are a general. You like this right here <laughs> no you're a general you're wow wow awesome awesome and of course we know Nini oh yes, yes always oh, the prayer warrior the evangelist the pat all of that the church mother the sit down <laughs> always uh, gotta thank God for my neighbor Sherry who I grew up with that's another Christian tabernacle in fact she was also greater I'm, I'm sorry, Faith Hope. She was little. She was small like me when we were going there. And a lot of you all said, well, who is Bishop Dennis? Well, Bishop Dennis was my district elder. He was my youth. youth. <laughs> he was the one that Sherry and I would peek in the door to see, you know, when they had YPHA, who going to teach? We, we would only go for two people. No, three. Bishop Dennis and uh, uh uh, what Pastor Wilson and um, uh, she's mother now. Um, uh, what is her name? Rosie Johnson. If we saw those three, because she had it sometimes, and we would say, "Okay, we're going in." If not, we were going to skip it. No, <laughs> we were going to skip it. So we thank God. But I wanted you to know that the ministry, we thank God that the ministry is blooming yeah. and it's, you know, it, it, got, it gotten at a standstill, but God sent that. He sent that gift. Who else? Oh, yes. And my sister who's under us, who's pastoring, she's in Atlanta. My sister, I have a lot of sisters and brothers. Y'all just didn't know that. And I don't mean that by they my sister. No, they my blood. <laughs> Papa was a rolling stone. Whoever he laid his hat was his home. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway, yes, I wanted you all to know that we are a church on the move. And I thank God. Thank God. We don't have to. They send. They know when we send them out, they go. But thank you. Thank, thank you. you for putting this anniversary and all of that you all do daily. Thank you, Bishop Williams. Bishop Williams was one who came to. He. Yeah, he's, he was one of our guests doing one of our anniversaries, Bishop Muse. We had different ones, different years, and he was one, and he supported us. And we love you, Bishop. We love you. And yes, Mother, good to see you. We love you. We love you. I, I, that's the thing about calling names. Love you, Vanessa. Oh, yes, one of the elders. Yes, yes. I'm going down everybody, free to everybody. All the kids who are here, young people who are here, just a few, but we thank you for coming. Thank you, musicians, again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless you now, is it any, we love you too. He has street ministry. Street ministry, that's his ministry. He's out there on the street, yes. yes. Are we doing the benediction? I wanted to hear more word. <laughs> I wanted to hear more out of him. Every time I, I hear Bishop Dennis, I can just sit and listen and not go. Yes, only a few people. Bishop Dennis, Miles Monroe, we sat for four or five hours. And, 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 and Bishop Ellis, Bishop El in the Bahamas. Yes, Bahamas. Those who don't know, my, half of my family is Bahamian. 
So, you know, we get a chance to hear certain people if we go. You know, we haven't gone that much, but when we do, we have. So those were our people. I have to say this, you can stand, that Bishop, I'm Bishop, he wasn't a Bishop, but he was in his right. But um, I have to say Dr. Miles Monroe, he blessed my husband and I. And he poured in some things, you know, which he didn't have to do, you know, because we were going to represent our church. But he didn't know. We were, you know, he didn't know. And then just anyway, I thank God for him. And it's just, I just thank God. I thank God for all of you all. This man here, thank God. Thank God. Can we just applaud him? I know you all miss him. Thank God Thank for you, all of you and just wanted to say that um, I see all those that are around that have poured into us yes. Yes. and we are forever grateful yes. for those that have been nurturing us yes. and praying for us yes. and we thank you so much. Yes. And we can never for repay. Yes. The Lord will pay. Yes, He will. He the is. Lord is grateful yes. for it. Yes, He is. Amen. Yes, He is an apostle. We didn't yeah. say apostle peoples. I have to say oh, that. Oh yes. And, and and some of you all don't know we would it was bishop peoples before He passed. We have to say people who poured into us, and we're grateful. Yes. We're grateful. Thank you, Bishop Dennis. We're grateful. Yes. We're grateful. We're so grateful. Oh, Father. Yes. Father, we thank you. We thank, thank you. Lord. We thank you. We thank you, oh Father. First, we want to thank you for the years. We yes, thank Lord. you, oh God. Just like a 12-year-old child. Mm. Yes, Lord. Going into something else that's new. Something that's untouched. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank you for those thank that will God. reach. And thank you for those who will send out afresh. And yes, thank Lord. you for those who they'll reach. I want to say that first. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank you. I thank you even for my husband. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for what we just saw today. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I thank you for what we heard today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some of you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We see the miracle. We see the miracle. Hallelujah. We see it. And we thank you. Thank you for the wisdom that you poured in this man. I thank you. I thank you that we don't move until you speak through yes, us. We Lord thank God. you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. Yes, Father, Lord. okay, God, we thank you for those who have come out again. We thank you for their love towards us. We thank you most of all that they love you. We thank you for the mercies again that you yes. poured on us daily. We thank you that we're able to say that we die daily, that we strip off daily, that we may hear you. Yes. Hallelujah. That we'll never be stuck with something we don't like because we're following you. And in you, you bring joy. In you, you bring hope. Yes. In you, hallelujah, restoration. And in you, movement is always happening. We thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. There's never been a stale word from your lips, oh God. And we thank you. We thank you for the people you've sent to us. Oh, my Lord. Thank you. They have grabbed the, hallelujah, the vision, and they've taken it, and they've moved it on. Hallelujah. And we thank you for those who still trying to get it. Yes. <laughs> we thank you that, hallelujah, thank you for the wheat, thank you for the tear. Because we do need each other. The tear makes us strong. 
<laughs> in the strong hallelujah we supply the meat to those who are weak hallelujah we thank you now father as we leave this place oh god yes, yes we that decree you give us, yes your love yes. and your mercy Yes. And your grace, Lord yes. God, to follow us, Lord God. Yes. All the days of our lives. All the days. We declare, Lord God, your peace. Yes. And your joy. Yes. Oh God, as we leave this place. Yes. In the name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for our virtual service. But the fun doesn't have to stop here. If you look down at the bottom of your screen, you will find a way to join us. Join us at KC Inspires You. That's right, KC Inspires You. Do you need prayer? KC Inspires You. Do you wanna give a tithe or a seed offering? KC Inspires You. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual service. And remember, we are a house of worship. We are a house of fellowship and we are a house of empowerment. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. Join us back next week. Yes. Now, if you need prayer today or any time, just email us and we will make sure we contact you. God yes. bless and see you next week. See you next week.